Um, and I guess the reason that we're most here is because there was a lot of interest in a serial burglar and rapist last uh, couple of weeks. And let me give you some background on this. Back in July of uh, 2015, here in the city, we had a string of burglaries at our homes, businesses, garages, etc. And at that time, we closed in on two groups. One was a group of teenagers, 15 of them, and I'm glad the prosecutor's here because I called her on a Saturday. I said, we've identified these 15 gang members that are hitting our whole region for burglaries, and she assigned a prosecutor to manage all those cases on a Saturday, so I'm grateful to her for that. And then the second group was a mother and son team with a little help from their stepfather that was breaking into uh, homes in our aid beat, which is the far west end. So once we closed those cases, I remember vividly, I had the detectives in my office, and I said, great, maybe for a minute we won't have any beanies in the West End. And then Captain Levins, who's since uh, retired, but he did a masterful job, real long face, arms folded like this, made my chest hurt. I said, what's the matter, Bill? He says, there's a couple out there don't don't fit these patterns, but they happened about the same time. And he says, I think there's someone else out there. So much for being elated about the two groups we just caught. Um, we looked further at those. Uh, we checked with uh, our regional partners, and it certainly appeared that we had another serial burglar slash uh, rapist on our hands. I can't go into the other jurisdictions cases, nor will I give any evidentiary information to you, but let me tell you that currently at a minimal, we have about 35 cases in our region that we suspect, and I want to underscore suspect, this person is responsible for. In the city of Dearborn, we have concluded that there's three cases that uh, involve this individual. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about those cases for the time being. Um, on November 17th, Michigan State Police, I couldn't be more grateful to them. They did some wonderful work on matching some uh, DNAs from the region, and we got an early morning, 1 a.m. call saying, are you sitting up? I said, barely. They said, all the uh, checks that you put in all match up to one guy. So that's all we knew. Going forward, I can tell you that our task force was put together on the 17th of November, 2015. It included, obviously, our department, Michigan State Police, our Fusion Center, FBI, Dearborn Heights, Allen Park, Redford, Inkster, Garden City, MDOC, and the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. And uh, I already gave you the information about the 34 cases or so with three in our city. And among the three, there was some DNA evidence, but I, I won't get into that as well. Uh, I can't tell you what this task force has done. Painstakingly, they went out and followed up with every known victim in all of these uh, areas. They completed victimology reports. They're taking in all kind of digital evidence on phone numbers, dumping phone records, towers, videos, uh, computer mapping on crime, and a whole lot more. The uh, FBI behavioral scientists, the analysts, they give me, uh, they make my brains hurt. These guys are so smart, and these ladies. They refer to this uh, person uh, as a power reassurance rapist. I want to tell our citizens and our community alike that uh, there's no more power he holds over the people, and I can assure you that he'll be in jail for a long time. Okay, go ahead. I feel good about it. And, you know, I mentioned that during this time we had not many but a fair amount of suspects that came to our attention for a number of reasons. And every time we looked at them, uh, it just didn't pan out. We finally got a break in the case where somebody in another city had a video of somebody that went into a backyard. And although it didn't fit uh, the characteristics of all the B&Es and the assaults that we have had, based on our full cooperation, we got that video and we went public with it. And I remember on Labor Day, I called again Lieutenant Beggs down to my office and I said, 
did anybody identify this person in a video? He says, no, you might have to call in some markers with the media, sorry, media, and maybe they'll run it again with a personal appeal. And I said, okay, we'll be back Tuesday and we'll figure out the best way to do that, check with all our regional task force partners and make sure that that's the right thing to do. Luckily, on Tuesday afternoon, they come in very excited, said we got a, a description, a name, a potential guy that was seen in that video. I didn't hold out that it would be the guy. God knows we've had a few guys we've looked at. But as it turned out, our state police lab did a wonderful job, and within a few hours, about eight, they called us and said, you got your guy. So for that, I can say to this community and to our members that this particular nightmare that has plagued our community in our region for a long time is over. Uh, I can tell you that I couldn't be prouder of the task force members here. I mentioned how proud I am of our department and the community. I think that cases like this uh, certainly give us uh, validation for a consolidated dispatch and for the sharing of information from the intelligence community, which will add additional layers that we might discern some crimes that go on for a real long time. Uh, with that, I'm going to conclude.